In this video, I'm going to cover streaming real-time data in the Charles Schwab API. In the first part of the video, I'm going to cover streaming using the Schwab dev package. And in the second part, I'm going to show how you can stream from scratch. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new project. I'm using PyCharm. I'm going to name this project stream demo, but you can choose whatever you want. Or if you already have a project, you can just continue in there. Next, I'm going to create a new file. I'm just going to name it main.py. If you haven't already, you're going to want to install the Schwab dev package. We can do that by pip install Schwab dev. Now I already have it installed, so when I run this, it's not going to do anything. You may also need to use pip3 instead of pip. It depends on how your install is configured. Next, I can just build a simple program to make sure that it's all working. So first I'm going to import Schwab dev. Then I'm going to make a client. I'm just going to name mine client. And we can make it by calling Schwab dev dot client with a capital C. Inside of client, I can add in my app key. So you would put something like your app key here. And then we also have the app secret, which is the second argument. Now I have mine stored in a .env file, so I'm going to import the modules for that. But you can use what works best for you. I'm just using the .env file for privacy, so I can share my screen. Now I'm going to copy over my .env file. I also have a tokens.json file that I'm going to copy over. This will just make the tutorial faster so I don't have to go through the authentication procedure. I've covered that in my first video already. If you don't already have a tokens.json file, then you don't really need to worry. The Schwab dev client will create it for you if you don't have one. The next thing I'm going to do is add in an argument. This is just for me. When you start the client, it'll make a call to get the linked accounts. I'm setting this to false so that it doesn't print this in the terminal and I don't have to blur it out. After this, I'm going to add client.updateTokensAuto. This spawns a thread that automatically checks the access token and makes sure that it's updated. Now we're free to make any calls that we want, so I can call client.quote, and I'm just going to get a quote for AMD. Now that gets the quote, but we need to print it out. And to get the data from there, I'm going to call it .json on it. Normally, we wouldn't want to call just .json on this. We would want to make sure that the request went through OK. Instead of calling .json, if we call .ok, we get a boolean value if the request has succeeded. So now, if I run this, we should be able to get a quote for AMD. And we can see down here that we did get a quote for AMD. There's a ton of data returned, but here, I'm outside of hours, so the close price, $166.78. Streaming is also very easy to do. Instead of getting a quote, I can do client.stream.start, or I can set client.stream to a variable. So let's do that instead, streamer equals client.stream. Now instead of calling client.stream.start, we can just call streamer.start. So down here, I'm going to do streamer.start. Then to send in requests, we can call streamer.send. This sends it directly into the WebSocket stream. However, if we want to send a pre-compiled request, then we can call something like streamer dot level one equities and I'm going to stream AMD along with the fields 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. The fields determine the particular data that you want to be streamed. You always have to send in 0 since that is the key itself and the rest of the fields are documented in the GitHub. At the end, I'm also going to add a sleep If your main code is not long enough, it may quit before the stream starts running. While the stream is running, the Python program will stay alive. So now if I run this program, the stream will start. 
and here we have the stream and right here we have the data for our key AMD and we have all of the values that it is streaming since I'm outside of hours I'm just gonna be getting heartbeats for now but normally in hours you'll get many more of these data packets now I'm gonna stop the stream now there's also something else that we can do with the data if we actually want to use this data instead of printing it out we can make a custom response handler before we start the stream I can define a response handler and what this will do instead of printing the stream to another window the response handler will take the data and just print it out in the main window. We can also choose to do other things with the response, which is what you'll want to do. But for now, this is just an example of how to use a response handler. So we can take this function and paste it into the start. Now, when the streamer starts, it'll use this response handler to choose what to do with the data that's returned in the stream. If I run the file now, we can see down here that the data from the stream comes down here inside the main terminal. There are also other commands that we can send to the stream. Inside of a subscription request, we can send in custom commands. The default command is add. What the add command will do is append the new subscription that you're adding to the current list of symbols that you're already streaming. There is also the subs command, which will overwrite all of the other requests that you've already sent in for this particular service. If you want to remove a particular symbol from streaming, then you can call the unsubs command, and this will unsubscribe you from that particular symbol in that particular service. The view command will return the list of symbols and fields that you are currently subscribed to. In addition to level one equities, there are also 13 other services that you can subscribe to. You can subscribe to level one equities options, futures, future options, and Forex. You can subscribe to book orders for the New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, and options. You can also subscribe to chart equity, chart futures, screener equity, screener options, and account activity. To stop the stream, we can call streamer.stop. And that will stop the stream. And then after 10 seconds, the stream will close. In the documents folder of the GitHub, I can find the streamer guide, download it, and in here, there is a list of all the fields that you can stream. For example, on page 16, we have all the different fields that you can subscribe to. In the example that I showed earlier, I subscribed to fields 0 through 5. Now, we always need to send in symbol, but the other data fields that I was getting were the bid price, ask price, last price, bid size, and ask size. There are many more fields that you can subscribe to to get the data that you need. Inside the test folder of the GitHub, there's also a stream demo file. This contains a longer version of the code that I showed in this video. These are all the different requests that you can make. For this part of the video, I'm going to go over streaming from scratch. I should first note that you can also find all of this documentation using the streamer guide from the docs folder on the GitHub. To start, we have to make a call to user preference. In the Schwab dev package, this can be called by client.preferences, and then to get the data out of it, you call .json. This call will return something that looks like this. The only part that we really need is the streamer info. So this has the URL, the customer ID, the Corel ID, and a couple other things that we'll need to use when we go to start the stream. If you're not using the Schwab dev package, the endpoint is right here. When we start the stream, we're going to want to use an asynchronous function since it's a WebSocket stream. Using the URL from the streamer info called streamer socket URL, we can then send the login payload. Everything that we send will be a dictionary with a list of the requests. Every request, even if there's only one, will have requests at the beginning as the key and then the value will be a list. The login payload looks like this, and we can use these values from the streamer info package that we got from the API call. We also need to send in the access token. After we've sent in the login payload, we are now logged into the stream, and we can begin sending our subscription requests. 
This is an example of subscribing to AMD and Intel for the fields 0 through 5 and 8. For each subscription request, we have to include the service a request ID, which is incremented by one for every request that you make, the command, as well as the customer ID, the Corel ID, and the parameters. Remember the different commands, which are subs, which will override everything, add, which appends your subscriptions, unsubs, which will remove the keys from your subscription, and view, so you can view the keys or fields that you've subscribed to. Keep in mind for the stream, if you want to be sending and receiving at the same time, since you'll be continuously receiving subscribed data, you may want to thread these operations. So you have one thread that's constantly listening for received data, and you have another thread that you can use to send requests whenever you want. However, you could choose to only do subscriptions right at the start. In fact, you can also send re subscription requests with the login payload. Then once you send those, you can just continuously listen for data responses. The Schwab dev package uses threads so that you can send subscription requests whenever you want, and it continuously listens and sends it into the response handler. If you want a more in-depth look at the code, then the Schwab dev package is open source, so you can use it as an example for your project. I know that the streaming from scratch was a little bit slow, but I decided to do it this way instead of showing the code because I figured that it wouldn't take up as much time. And I figured that there's already the documentation there, which is easy to follow. I hope this video was helpful for figuring out streaming in the Schwab API. Thanks for watching.